Hello and welcome to another production of the Grand Canyon Railway and Orange Strait Productions. This time we're going to be talking about, here it comes, managing your steam locomotive boiler water level. So steam engines, well they require a whole lot of steam. Of course that's why they're steam engines, which takes water and fire. Your job as a fireman is to give them the water and the steam. So why should you be concerned about the water levels? Why should you be concerned about that stuff? Well, because, boom! If you don't take care of the water level, it's going to blow up and you're dead. Ha ha, got your attention. No, really, it'll blow up and you're dead. So be careful of the water level. Okay, let's say that you're the fireman no, I'm the fireman. Well, this time I am. What's going on inside the boiler? Now, come on, let's think about what's going on inside. I think it's cool. I mean, these things are going on inside the boiler. And who can see it? Well, we can. Well, you know, the fire makes steam and then you add water and then oh it cools off and then oh well wait you know it boils down again and well the whole idea is to make some steam right but the problem is if you put a whole lot of water in all at once let's see what happens come on here it is come on here it is just a little bit of cool water and oh it's all dead well no that's not good we have to keep the steam going all the time. So, what do you think? Uh, don't put a whole bunch of cold water in at one time. Okay, so here we are back in the boiler. We're bubbling around, bubbling around. Okay, well, we're getting hot, getting hot. Okay, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, we got lots of steam now. I like it. Okay, we put the pump on. Uh, okay kind of calms down okay well pump off here comes some more and that's exactly what's going on whether you use the injector or the feed water that's exactly what's going on now think about that you know are you going uphill do you need more water or more steam you got to think about that because that is like the biggest most important aspect because if you're like out of water, uh, who cares about the steam? You're going to slow down, put some water in. Okay, let's try it again. Now, if you can put some warm water in, it starts right back bubbling right away. Cool. So, let's see. Injector, feed water, uh, positive pump. Let's see. And if you can put a little bit of water in at a time, Hey, doesn't even affect anything. So think ahead, putting your water in, and then you can be a great fireman. If you want to keep the grumpy old engineer happy, you're going to have to keep the boiler water up at the right level. I'm going to start out by talking about the injector here. And the two things that you have to understand with the injector is you have to have a water supply that you can adjust how fast it's going and of course the steam. You have to be able to adjust how much steam you're using. For reference purposes, these are what the two injectors look like that we have on the Grand Canyon steam locomotives. They have steam in, water in, and water out. They're a little different than the one that I'm going to be showing you in a minute, but they work exactly the same. These are just a little harder to show you how things work. But this is what they look like on our locomotives. The way this injector works, well, you have a water source and a boiler. The fire makes the water boil. And we're going to be using that steam to push water into the boiler using the same pressure that's inside as what's outside. Interesting concept here. Same pressure both sides. The magic that makes an injector work are these Venturi valves that you see there at the bottom. 
And what's happening is that it forces the water at supersonic speeds. This water is going at an amazing speed and it just pushes the water back towards the boiler. It's kind of like a question of a big truck. If you were to take a big truck and put it right up next to a telephone pole and then tried to push over the pole, it won't push it over. But even a very small car, if it's going fast enough, will knock over a telephone pole. So you have to have a water source and then also you have to have an overflow because there's always going to be a certain amount of overflow. In our case, this overflow water goes just right down onto the ground. You have to have a valve to turn the steam on. And then you have to have a non-return valve on the boiler. So once you push that water back in the boiler, it doesn't come back out again. So it's a really simple, basic procedure, but truly magic to make it work. Okay, let's watch an injector work. Now you have lifting injectors and non-lifting injectors, but for this talk, eh, it doesn't matter which one you have. The two things that you do need is you need a water supply that you can adjust, and you need a steam supply. Now what you do is you turn the water on, you turn the injector on just a tiny little bit, and then you open up the steam all the way. You want to make sure that you have the steam on all the way. Then you turn the steam off, and then you turn the water off. So let's see it again here. Water on, turn on a little bit, turn the steam on all the way, let it run just a little bit. And then you turn the steam off and then the water off. Keep in mind that you only want to bring the boiler pressure down about 5 psi. And here's one that didn't work. See all the steam that's coming out? Let's see that again. That distinctively is a situation where the injector did not pick up. You got to be able to tell the difference. And there's one that it did pick up and is working. Now let's listen to this. Here's a successful start. And this is what it looks like and sounds like from outside. Notice that the steam stops. And here's an unsuccessful start. See how the steam's coming out? And it makes a very distinctive sound. And here's what it looks like outside. And the steam never stops. Okay, that was a nice little introduction to the injector. But Grand Canyon locomotives, steam locomotives, have two different systems to put water into the boiler. The other one is the Worthington Locomotive Feed Water Heating Equipment. And this is like what we saw earlier in the program, where you can put the water in a little bit at a time, and it's already preheated. Now it can be blah, 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 a whole bunch of information, or let me just show you a picture. And here we go. This will give you a little bit of an idea. Well, of course, we're going to start off with the valve that says feed water. This is what gets everything moving. Just past this area is an oiler, puts oil in the steam that goes down to the control valve on the positive pressure pump. Each one of the locomotives have one. This is the one on the 29, it's on the side. And this is the one on the 4960, it's way up front. From there, the control valve sends steam up to the heater unit, which is just in front of the smokestack on both of the locomotives. Depending on whether the heater is full or not, the control valve sends steam down to the transfer pump and then is it exhausted. And this is the one on the 29. We'll talk more about these pumps a little bit later. From that transfer pump, it goes back up to the heater unit up in the top of the locomotive. 
and that unit of course is the one that heats the water before it gets pumped in. And part of the heat for that water is coming in from the exhaust from the pistons. And I'm going to explain something else a little bit later. From that point, the hot water gets pulled down to the pro positive pressure pump. And from this point, it's going to be pumped into the boiler. Now keep in mind that the feed water here, you can dial it down to go as slow or as fast as you want. As what you saw in the pictures there, the first step is taking the water from the tender and moving it onto the locomotive. These are centrifugal pumps, which means they don't have a lot of pressure behind them. What you do want to be very careful of is make sure that they are going around. You have the steam which is driving one side, which is driving the pump and moving the water around. There's a shaft in there that you have to make sure is turning. There's not much power behind these pumps, so you have to make sure they're working. The first way that you can tell if they're working is, well, you can be standing outside watching, seeing if it's going around. When you're in the cab, there's this gauge, and you can think of it as an on or off gauge. It'll either go up or go down. It tells you that it's working. Let's look at the Grand Canyon locomotives. Of course, we start at the valve. The valve turns on the steam, runs up forward, goes to the control valve on the positive pressure pump, which at that time goes up and tells the heater at the top to start working and it has a float valve on it. The float valve determines whether or not it's going to turn on that low pressure pump to fill it up. It doesn't run all the time but only runs when it needs to. Now you might be wondering what that peg steam is. Well that steam that's going to be mixed in with the hot water to make it even hotter. I never knew what it was until I put this together. Well, once the water leaves the heater up the top, it goes through the smoke box, which is way up forward, just below the smokestack. At this time, the steam from the peg is mixed in with it, and it gets really, really, really hot. Not only from the steam, but also from the exhaust gases. And then from there, it gets pumped directly into the boiler. So that's where the water comes and goes. It's a wonderful machine. Works great and you can dribble water in or you can pump in a lot of water all at once. But there's a little bit more to know about this system. So how can you use a feed water heater to your best advantage? It can be your best friend and really help you a lot out there. When you come on the locomotive, if the dynamo is not turned on, this is what it looks like. This is one of the only things on the locomotive that requires electricity to function. And as you can see it says, feed water temp. The two different steam locomotives have this gauge in different locations. As you move from one locomotive to the other, start getting in the habit of seeing exactly where it is. And it is the only one that lights up, so it makes it relatively easy to keep track of. If you're running downhill or on a light grade, more than likely, the feed water temperature will be below 100. This is a time that you want to start thinking about not using the feed water heater. Rather, this is a time to use your injector. The injector puts a lot of steam in there, which does heat the water up some. And of course, we don't want to be putting cold water into the boiler. During times you're on a heavy grade, going uphill, working hard, you'll find that you're feed water temperature will be sometimes well above 100. This is a time you want to start using that feed water heater. This is a time that there's a lot of heat going on, not only out of the stack, but in the smoke box itself. So it'll be heating up this water going into the boiler really nicely. If it's up around like right now, 156, man, you can be running that feed water heater fast. While you're using the feed water heater, remember that you can dial it up and dial it down. Sometimes you only need a small amount of water going in, sometimes you need a lot. It just depends on how hard you're working. And of course, steam engines, they use a lot of water all the time, so you're going to be one of your primary jobs is putting water into the boiler. Do you need to remember where all the tubes go and how everything's hooked up? No. What's important 
is how to get the water in the boiler and keep that level up to where you want it to be. And once you get comfortable with that, you'll be a great fireman. Have fun!